Hey guys, so today I have hopefully a very entertaining video, sort of. Um, this is my HK416, um, which I kind of fabric cobbled together. I don't know if you guys remember this gun from a video that I made about it. Um, geez, it's got to be at least a year, um, maybe a year and a half even. It was, I think, one of the earlier videos on the channel about this. Um, and it looked, well... Terrible is uh, a little bit of an understatement. It still doesn't look incredibly good with the electrical tape grip, which is something that I'm going to address next time I try to go and you know redo this a little bit. Because um, what I want to do is go ahead and cut this plastic grip off. The reason why this is taped up is because this won't close all the way um, due to the fact that this is a version 3 gearbox and the motor is mounted at a slightly different angle. It's mounted slightly down, which has um, caused a huge issue. So. Basically, the front of the grip has no plastic, so it's been taped over. Um, so what I want to do is cut this off, make a 3D printed gear that just slips over it, uh, or 3D printed grip, rather, that just slips over it and screws on, and then there you go. That will be great. Um, also, one thing, one major change is before, this had no mag release. As you can see, we now have a mag release. doesn't look very good, I will admit, but it is there. And so... Um, it does work. Uh, it's a bit sticky sometimes. I can get it. There we go. So there we go. Magazine comes out. It holds the mag in really tight, which is probably, which is a lot better than, um, you know, not having it or having it held in too loose because I have lost magazines that way before, which really does suck. Um, you were running down the field into the heat of fire and you suddenly realize that your magazine fell out and you have no clue where it is. Um, so that does suck. However, this mag catch is definitely not going to let the magazine fall out. Uh, that's more for certain. Um, one other thing is I put the fire selector back on. It doesn't do a thing, but it is there. Um, and what I'm going to do is you see this hole here that was already drilled. Um, I'm going to put a button here and that will be the selector because this is now completely computer controlled. You say what? Um, yes, I have put a microcontroller in the stock, um, which is, you know, got a MOSFET and a bunch of other things, you know, wrapped all into one package. And basically what that allows me to do is permanently set this gun in full auto mechanically and then basically control it with software to do like through round bursts and a bunch of other things. Um, there's tons and tons of features that I could program into this, which is great. And of course, since, you know, um, it's based around an AT Tiny 85, if you're curious. Um, so because of that, there's a limited list stuff. So basically it'll be one of these things where maybe there'll be a light or something as a battery indicator up here and also the button and you just press the button, um, to select, you know, maybe the light will change colors or whatever to select what mode you want to be in. And technically you could have an infinite number of modes. Uh, so like three round, five round burst, whatever you want, totally programmable, which is great. That'll be a whole separate video about that little controller board that I built specifically for this gun. However, moving on. One other thing that is really major on this gun that I am very happy about is the barrel, or the end of the barrel rather. So I don't know if you guys remember, we had a black piece of pipe over this and some electrical tape and that was, uh, that was the muzzle and it looked Terrible. I mean, it still doesn't look incredibly good, but compared to that, I mean, this, you know, looks pretty darn good. Ignore all of this. Uh, someone broke off the front sight, and um, so I had to go and try to melt the plastic back in, and, and well, it doesn't look incredibly good, but it is, it is there, and it does function, which is really all that matters. I mean, really, I'll probably, it's just kind of there for looks. I'll probably put like a red dot or something on this. Uh, when it comes down to it. And then also, um, I've got a proper barrel extension, which um, I don't know if you noticed, but this I took off of my uh, dual barrel extension for my other rifle, which uh, I no longer need that extension for because now I've converted it to gas. That was more so of a thing, you know, when it was an AEG. So I took that off, completely repainted it. I think the paint came out pretty good. I think it looks pretty nice, and then of course I had to add one of my signature flash hiders to the end, and all of this is threaded, so I could take this off and replace it any way that I wish. Um, it's all threaded, so, and I also, I don't know if you guys noticed from the last flash hider on my other gun, uh, the camera wants to focus, you can see that it is Mutec right side up on both sides, rather than uh, upside down on the right side, that was kind of a pain. 
Um, but I think that's about it for the front, but I am very happy about this. Um, I think it looks significantly better, and I did print a ring to hold the two pieces together since, unfortunately, this body is a clamshell. You can kind of see, maybe not, see right here, this is the seam where the mag, well, that really does suck, though. That's, I really hate this body because of that. I wish that, I wish that it wasn't a clamshell. That would make this gun 100% better, but, you know, whatever. Um, also, another very noteworthy thing is going to be the stock. Um, as you notice, there is now a cover plate on here. It is a very bad cover plate. I didn't model it quite right. Um, it's only, it's being held on by one screw, which kind of stinks really bad, but, you know, it is there. And, um, you know, it's a lot better than not having a cover plate at all, especially since there is so much wiring inside this gun. There are four uh, 3.7 volt lithium cells in this. Um, again, you can't see them. That's basically a whole other video talking about the more technical aspect. But yeah, there are four 3.7 volt lithium cells all uh, wired in series, um, which are broken into two separate cells um, or two different halves on each side. Uh, in here, there are there's basically two different packs and because my LiPo charger is only meant for um, charging two individual cells at once, I had to break it up like that on the connector. So unfortunately I have to basically spend twice as long charging this, which is a real pain in the butt, but you know, it does work, and there are 2,000 milliamp hour or 2,600 milliamp hour cells, so honestly, I probably won't have to recharge it. I, I'll probably be able to just take it to the field, and, you know, I also have my gas rifle, so I don't really need to worry about that. I've also forgotten how horrible it is to wind high caps, but that's beside the point. I think that other than that, those are really the most noteworthy things. That and I also took apart the gearbox, and... Did a little work in there, but other than that, I mean, it basically shoots the same. Um, the accuracy is all right. It's not nearly as good as my regular rifle, my regular gas rifle, but eh, it does work. Um, it's more one of those things that you would go and rush up and, you know, it only shoots, I think, 350 with two fives is what I'm looking at. I mean, just judging by how fast the BB seem to be going and shooting it through the bottom of a soda can. Um, it won't quite pierce the bottom. It gets very, very close to piercing it, so I'm thinking it's probably shooting around 350, um, maybe a little bit higher, but that, but it definitely drops off quickly. And also, the hop up in this is non-existent, so um, it drops off very, very fast, which really, really sucks. Um, I don't know what happened to the pieces in the hop up unit. Um, if I still have them, I'll try to repair it. But this gun is a serious. And I do mean serious pain to take apart. I mean, the thing is basically impossible. Um, it, I literally spent two hours or so just trying to figure out how all this wiring needs to go in because this entire buffer tube is basically, might as well just be one giant wire. It's like, oh, I don't even know how many connections, like eight or so wires or something like that in there, um, plus the board and all the silly crap. So at some point, I will take this apart and show you the inside if you want to see it. Um, but also, I just thought one, real quickly as a size comparison, this is my regular M4, and as you can see, it's roughly the same size. Move it over a little bit. So I believe the HK is just slightly longer, but not that much. But I'm still probably going to be using my regular gas rifle for a lot of things. Uh, the body is metal. It's just... It just feels nicer. But at the same time, I think the, um, the HK is the only... AEG that I own right now. I have a version 2 gearbox laying around um, and I might just have to make a body for that that's 3D printed. I don't know. You know, maybe we'll have to see. Um, so, yeah, I don't know what we're going to do about that. Um, but anyway, I think that that's probably about it. Uh, the video is getting quite long. And uh, yeah, anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. If you want to see me strip this thing down completely, um, you know, see what, what all is in it, uh, leave a comment below and uh, leave a like, of course. Um, but also, if you hated the video, make sure to leave a dislike because whether or not you know it, it all counts as viewer engagement, which is all positive. So that's great. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching and have a very nice day.